I'm going to ask the staff to come up and join me. Staff of the preschool first. I'm going to get the playtime group up as well because I want to pray for them. So Josephine, come on down. It's like the new price is right. You're supposed to run, right? Staff, come on. Let's go. They're shy. Now, to some of you guys, you will not have met two or three. Our Dora and Anna, they're long timers and they've been around for a while and we're just so, so thrilled that they, they are with us. But late last year, the preschool went through a major transformation and um, we had uh, our current leader step off at the end of term three and uh, we went through a process through term three of searching for a replacement. And um, right up until three days before preschool was to start, we were, still didn't have someone for term four. Now, what that means is you just don't do preschool. <laughs> and, and so a whole bunch of you guys have been praying for this one person to turn up. And um, I don't want to put too much pressure on Josephine, but she's the chosen one. Yeah, so Josephine comes to us, and is it like you told me to introduce you, is that, is that what we're still doing? Did, did you want to say anything this morning? You were all good? <laughs> jo Josephine comes to us with a bunch of experience, and she used to run a preschool over at Leichhardt Baptist for about 15 years, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on any of this sort of stuff, right? So I'm, still, I'm right everything so far? So she's agreeing that she is the chosen one. <laughs> There's no reason why this can't be fun. Isn't that right? Yeah. That's right. Okay, I told her uh, earlier, she said, what do I, should I expect for the day? And a couple of years ago, we had the staff shuffling. And I said to shuffle, and she looked at me as if I was just crazy. But ask Aldora, like, Aldora knows that that's what happens. Yep. yep, she's done it. But I won't put that pressure on Josephine today. There's nowhere to hide up here. <laughs> you don't shuffle either. That's right, she's told me her husband does. No? Yeah, okay. We can look at that later down the park, maybe. But Josephine turned up with a whole bunch of experience, and, uh, and she could tell by that stage that we were in a place of crisis, and um, we sort of negotiated a place and talked about a place, and she said, why don't you think about doing it this way, that way, and all of a sudden, all the things started lining up, and that's the way we did it. Uh, and obviously, things have changed a lot in the last uh, term, and we're nearly through term one of of week eight, so we're doing great. And, and so the preschool has gone through a major transition and I want to thank you all you guys who are from the preschool that are there and are part of it and uh, we're really looking forward to seeing what God's going to do through this. But 22 years ago when we started this preschool, we started with the desire and the passion just to love a community just the way Jesus would love it. And, and it's something that I, I talk about with the staff all the time well, on a Wednesday morning. It's, you probably get tired of me talking about love, is that right? Courtney, be honest. No? You're all you're good. And, and it's something that we do and it's something that we intentionally do and, and we pray that that will continue to happen for, I don't know, another 22 years. When are you retiring? No, not yet. Not yet? Still the chosen one, right? Yeah. Okay. And, and so God led us and brought Josephine to us and that's what we believe as a church and she has hit the ground running and there's been a lot for her to learn and to go through and to think and to, and to process but she is a woman of high capacity, let me just say that and, and she is able to do and lead this preschool well. Right next to her is Courtney. Courtney's always smiling, does everyone know that? She, she smiles a lot, right? I'm not sure I want to be on the bad side of Courtney, but I reckon she, I, I don't know, I don't know Courtney, but I reckon she just smiles a lot and she's just, a, every time I go down there, there's something joyful that she's got to tell me and I'm just so pleased that she's with us. She's younger than my daughter, right? And so it's just such a privilege to see the next generation just coming up and being teachers and leaders. So is Georgia. So if we jump over our Dora, Georgia is, is, is as old as my daughter. So again, it's great to see this next generation coming through. And Georgia is studying at Macquarie Uni. Uh, she's with us three days a week. Uh, sorry, Courtney's with us five days a week. Georgia's with us three days a week. And she does a great job too. Is that right, parents? We're okay with that? All those in favour? Yeah. There we go. We have a vote of confidence right there. Maybe you're the chosen one after, I don't know, let's just put that out there. Uh, and then we've got our Dora, who, she's been with us for a few years, and if you know our Dora, you know a woman that just loves kids, right? Is that, is that true? Uh, every time you see her in the playground, she usually has one or two hanging off her, and there's just love that flows from her, and, and we're just so happy that you're with us, our Dora. And Anna, you've been with us for a long, the longest time. 
and, uh, and I am thrilled that you are still with us. You have a heart of gold. And again, you're very quietly spoken, so if I had asked Anna to shuffle, she probably would have melted, right? <laughs> you, you melted? Uh, see? At, uh, ask her when she's down at the park. Is that right? You coming down to the park later? Are you going to shuffle for us down there? No shuffling. But as you can see, there's a team here that has fun too. So when we sit together on a Wednesday morning, I do devotions with these guys. When we sit together, there's often laughter in there. There's sometimes there's tears, but they're, they're good tears, right? They're, they're good tears. And they're a team that's been bonded together and working really, really well together. And I want to say I just really believe in what's going to happen through these guys going forward. So part of this morning is praying for them. Uh, and asking God just to look after them and bless them with his presence and his spirit, which means his peace and his love, uh, as they do what they do every single day. Does anyone here want to work with kids five days a week? Okay, we've got oh, Paris. Paris. So Paris is, is Josephine's youngest daughter, and that's just something we need to keep an eye on as well. She's awesome too. But there's something about it, and there's a calling when you want to work for kids, and, and early childhood is one of those areas that's... It's, Times is tough going, yeah? There you go, she said a word. It's hard work. But it's rewarding work because you see what happens. And like my son went through the preschool and you see what happens, yeah? Isn't that good? Wasn't he good this morning? And, and so again, what these guys are doing now, there's a generation of kids that are, have been loved into our community. So what I'd like is for you guys to, to pray with me and ask the Lord to bless them. So if you want to close your eyes and bow your head or however it is that you pray, uh, we're going to ask the Lord to, to bless these guys. So let's just pray together. Father in heaven, I just thank you so much for this preschool and I thank you for all that it has been, all that it is doing and all that it will do. And we recognise it's gone through transition and we recognise, Father, that's been a tough time, but we can see the life and the light that's coming from that time. Father, we thank you for Josephine stepping in at just the right time. And all jokes aside, Father, I just thank you for, for her heart, for her desire to, to do this well and to see a team being built and a community being loved. I thank you for the 15 years she did that over there at, at Leichhardt and I know that that community would have been blessed by her and I just want to pray, Father, that this community will be blessed uh, by her, by Courtney, by the whole team. Uh, and I just want to pray, Father, this morning that you will just come and put your hand upon them and move through them and work through them for your glory. We pray for safety over this preschool and we pray, Father, that it will continue to grow and go from strength to strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. They do a great job and we should continue to pray for them every single day. Now I'm going to ask Trish and Laura and the Playtime crew to come on down as well because I want to pray for them. So Playtime is also celebrating 22 years of, of ministry and life in the community. This year Trish has dropped back to doing one day a week and Laura does the other day a week. So Laura does, where is she? Laura's not well. She's sick. Oh well. Yep. But she's here. The Laura does Thursdays, and uh, this year Thursdays for us is off the charts. Uh, we've we've had up to 33 or 34 families on a Thursday, which roughly equates to nearly 80 people down in the in the auditorium, which is a lot, right? Especially with this kind of weather. Trish does Tuesdays, and they have about 20 families on a Tuesday, much more relaxed, and it's excellent. Yep. And, and so Melanie, Maureen, and Mila, they work through those two days as well and they do a great job. So this morning, like we did with the preschool staff, we want to pray for our playtime staff. If we can call them staff, I don't know. Volunteers, awesome people. Oh, suckers. Suckers, as Laura says. Not at all. So if you want to pray with me, just bow your heads and we're going to pray together for these guys. Father in heaven, just like we pray for our, our preschool, we pray for our playtime and we thank you for 22 years of service. And, and Trish, well, she's been there from day one. And Lord, that's just an awesome, awesome effort that she has done. And we just thank you that, that uh, Laura is working with her. And I just thank you for this whole team. And we pray, Father, as they continue to serve you week in and week out. Uh, Lord, that you'll sustain them, that you'll bring joy to them. And Father, they'll continue to work with all their heart for your kingdom.
And so, Father, we thank you for the many lives and relationships that they are contacting and embracing. We thank you for the many people that they touch just with your love. And we want to pray, Lord, that in this week and the weeks that are following it, we'll continue to see your love inside of the, those four walls. Father, we thank you for whatever is ahead of playtime, and we just thank you, yeah, 22 years is a long time, but we look to the future and just there's so many other kids and so many other families that will be coming in and through us, and we recognise that so many of them go into preschool as well, and so, Father, we thank you for that connection. But Lord, we just pray your peace over them, your protection to them, and I pray that you'll continue to do a great work through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. Now, we're just going to do one more song before I give a short little message. So I'm just going to get Bethany to come up. This is going to be like an item. So you guys don't have to stand. You would not have heard this song probably before. Uh, it's a new song. This song was, was actually written about 150 years ago, but it's been revised in the last um, 12 months. It was written by a guy who just about lost everything in his life uh, through a shipwreck. And uh, he sings of his faith. And maybe as you're listening to this song, you'll hear this man's faith as it comes through it. Genesis 15, 1-6 Sometime later the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great But Abram replied O sovereign Lord, what good are all the blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no child Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household will inherit all my wealth you have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. But the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Thanks, Rachel. I just want to spend a few minutes just talking about that. Often you'll hear people say that children are a blessing. Is that right? How many people here believe children are a blessing? 24 hours a day? Darren's up for that. That's good, mate. It's a, it's a strange phrase at times because often the truth doesn't show in the actions. Are they really a blessing? The story of Abraham is one that's 4,000 years old or thereabouts. It might be three and a half thousand. You'll forgive me if I'm five or six hundred years out. It's a long time ago. And Abraham and Sarah didn't have a child. And in those days, uh, everyone looked at them and thought, what's going on? What's wrong? Now, just, just so you know what's happening in Abraham and Sarah's life, they're very, very wealthy. Very wealthy. Uh, they had lands like you wouldn't believe, as far as the eye could see is what the, the Bible says. So I don't know about you, but that's a long way. Uh, and that's the land. And they had so many cattle and sheep, you could just about not count them. And so in the eyes of our world today, we'd look at that and go, wow, they've got it all happening. Isn't that right? 
maybe not in drought in the middle of Australia and all that sort of stuff, but in, in that time it was this, this concept. And, and God turns up to them and says this phrase, you're going to be a blessing to all of the nations. And Abraham goes, that's, that's great, but I've got no kids, which means how is that going to happen? How is that going to happen? And what I love about Abraham with that is Abraham is a guy who thinks generationally. He's not just about himself. Does that make sense? Like in our culture today, we are designed and we are to taught and told at times it's all about you and don't think about what's happening next. you just got to do whatever makes you happy. And as long as you're doing that, then well, everyone else can make up whatever they need to make up around that. Is that right? It doesn't actually end up very well when you actually do that. It might sound and feel great in the moment, but what happens next? And so here's Abraham and he thinks generationally. And why I wanted to use this passage today is because we're talking about preschool and playtime that are designed to think generationally. It's not just about themselves. The staff is just not about themselves. And when I interview people and when I sat down with Josephine, one of the questions I'm looking and asking and seeing whether she's going to answer, is it about her or is it about a whole bunch of other things that actually look like little lives that need to be grown and nurtured and raised? And when I started hearing that, that's when I thought, you know what, this is the kind of person that I want to see inside of our preschool family. This is the kind of person that I believe in because I can see that she doesn't just think about herself. Is that, is that cool to say that? And I'm not embarrassing Josephine in saying that. I'm just breaking confidentiality in our uh, interview process. Is that... So you just, you know and how, what I'm thinking now when I'm sitting there and talking with you. Um, but here's a woman who thinks generationally. We have a God who thinks generationally. When he sent Jesus to us, like we're about to celebrate Easter in a couple of weeks' time. Can we believe it that Easter's already here? It's just crazy. Like, I love the fact that Easter buns are out already in January. That's really, really cool. But the fact that Easter is already here, that's just ridiculously short. But the whole concept of Easter is God thinking generationally. It wasn't just about himself. He wanted to start thinking, and he was thinking about us. So when Jesus was landed on the earth, the Bible says it wasn't just for that generation. It was for every other generation that would follow him. And so you have this God like Abraham or even like Josephine that is thinking beyond themselves and bigger than themselves and asking the question, what does life look like past me? And Jesus was that guy. So when Jesus turned up on the planet, he wasn't about building a kingdom for himself. He wasn't about getting all his people together to make an army to all of a sudden go, we're going to build Israel once again. What he was about was building a kingdom of God and it didn't look like arms and it didn't look like fighting or wars. It actually looked like love. And that's why I said, I say this to the preschool staff all the time, this concept of love is such a beautiful concept of God that has always been there, but in Christ it became manifest in the human form and he started teaching us things that are ridiculous. He taught us to love our enemies. He taught us not to judge anyone else. We live in a culture that judges everybody else. Can you see how different that is? He teaches us not to judge anyone else. He teaches us to love beyond what we can even believe and see. And he's going, that's what generational love actually looks like. He gives us the example of family. And when we talk about preschool, we talk about a preschool family. And then when people come in, they are loved as a family. Is that all right to say that, Josephine? And I know Trish and Laura do exactly the same. It, it blesses my heart when I get home and Trish goes, I, I just spent some time praying for a young baby today. Or Laura goes, I spent some time talking with a woman who was just so upset and, and just had so much going on. I can see the generational love that's actually happening. And if you can actually start thinking like that, we actually start walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Is that right? So Jesus is a guy who he didn't fight for what he believed in. He ended up dying for what he believed in, but he actually lived what he believed in. And for us here at this church and this preschool, this playtime, it's living what we believe. It's not fighting for it, it's just living for it. And sometimes that works really, really well and sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes you get criticism and all kinds of things that land back on you, but it doesn't stop from loving. So I'll come down in the morning and I'll say, how, is you, how are you, Josephine? She says, good. I'll come down in the afternoon and say, how was your day? She says, good. Are you expecting anything else? Well, I hope it always stays like that, but you know what? We're human beings and sometimes it might not be that fantastic, but you know what? I know that Josephine's the sort of person who will get back up and start loving again. 
Is that right? All the rest of the staff, you'd see that in Josephine. She'll get up and start loving again. You'll see that in Trish. You'll see that in Laura. You'll see that in people who want to live what they believe rather than just let other ones do it. Let us continue to be a community and a family that thinks generationally. Abraham, all those years ago, is just going, that's really great, God, and I just love the fact that you're blessing me, and that's really cool. I've got lots of animals, and I've got lots of produce, and I've got great, I've got great everything else, but you know what? I don't have a child, and, and God says, you will have one, and, and Abraham says, that's impossible because Sarah's too old. Sarah's too old, and, 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 and in that time, like, God comes to them and says they're going to have a baby in 12 months, and Sarah laughs, okay? She thinks it's a joke. Okay, so if you're past childbearing age and, and someone came to you and said, yeah, I have a baby, uh, what would you be saying? You, you'd probably laugh first. If you're an Australian, you'd probably laugh, right? Are you serious? Are you joking? Uh, anyway, when the baby came, eventually they called him Isaac, which means he laughs. And so what was started in jest ends up in reality because I know when I held my kids, there was joy in that place. I can't hold him now, he's too big, right? He fights back. It, uh, it's just they're, they're strong and they're big, but when they're little and you're holding them, there's something of the joy that just flows through you. And Zach's name is Zach, not because he laughs, but I don't even know why we called him Zach other than we just love the name, right? It's a strong name. But here's the thing, uh, our kids are there to bring us blessing and joy and find that today, discover that today, and all of a sudden you start becoming generational. The message of Easter is exactly that message. If you come back in two weeks' time, you'll hear me speak that out time and time again. This incredible message of love, this incredible message of grace and no condemnation, where the church has been known as a, con a place of condemnation for so many years. Uh, we're just undoing that part and just undoing that place and just going, you know what, this place, this thing called the church, is no place to have condemnation. That's what Jesus brought us. That's what he modelled us. And as far as I'm concerned, he is the chosen one. He is the one that we follow in the footsteps of. Is that good? I want to pray for you guys, and then we're going to have fun with one more song before we head down the park. So what the story is, um, as soon as it, there's no morning tea downstairs this week for all those who are ready for morning tea. Sorry. Just come on down the park. So if you get down there first, whoever's down there first, just find a shady tree, and we congregate. Okay, so there's no designated place, so we just find a shady tree. Looks like the sun's sort of behind some clouds, which is really, really good. Um, also for our church family, in, in next Saturday is Ellen and Elisa getting married. Isn't that awesome? Yep. And um, they've invited everyone to come to the ceremony, which is at 2 p.m. on Saturday, um, and Elise tells me she's not going to be late. Is that right, Elise? Uh, Elise is just not that kind of person. So at 2 o'clock, right? So if you want to be here, everyone's welcome. We're going to celebrate their beautiful day of marriage. Okay, let me pray, and then we're going to sing. Father in heaven, we just thank you for all that you are and all that you do. You predate time. Abraham discovered it. Jesus demonstrated it, and now, Father, we are walking in it. So, Father, I pray that you continue to stretch us in the avenues of love. Stretch us, Father, to love ridiculously, to love even where our enemies want to speak against us. We're going to choose another path that kind of looks like Christ. So, Father, I pray that you continue to work and bless through all that we do as human beings in the, in the lives that we have, that we will add to people's lives and not take. That today, Father, that we will add love. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Strong and so mighty, there's nothing like God cannot do. That's true.